take a look at the header area. And we're going to start from left to right. Leftist most button being this big bitwig button here. And this is basically your power button, which will turn on the entire audio engine. It's off now, so you can see my transport controls are grayed out because I can't do anything. So I flick it on, and sure enough, everything lights up. And now we have access to our transport controls. We can press play, stop, we can do recording. This is the automation write record. So if you want to record automation, you would click this and uh, do your automation in the arrange view. We will go over that later. These are your punch in and uh, punch out buttons. This is the looping button here. So you can see I've got my loop on. And yes, transport loops around. If I take it off, well, there it goes. So we can turn the loop back on to cycle. And you'll notice now that I have this blue triangle here. And this is the uh, start playhead position locator. So now when I press play, you'll notice that the playhead starts from this location right here. If I want to reset that location, I can simply click the stop while the playhead is already stopped. So there we go, it's reset it back to one. So the way that you can move this is you could double click anywhere up on this upper level here. You can also just press the play button again, and wherever it stops, it will set this playhead. So let's reset it back to start. I'll press play and press play again. And that wasn't so good because it's real close to start, but you can definitely tell that it's moved. There we go. That's a bit better. So you can tell now, yes, it's just going to resume playing right where I had stopped it before, which is kind of handy. Again, press stop to reset it. And now we're back at that position. Recording is basically just what you think it would be. You click the record button, to arms it. Do you decide whether or not you want to write automation? Then you click play to start. You get a little count in. And there you go. I've recorded in these notes on my MIDI channel that I had set up here earlier. So that leads me to this next button, which is the overdub button. Now with overdub engaged, I'm going to click record here and press play. Okay. So you can hear that I've got those notes in there. And now you can see that I've recorded over and nothing's getting erased. If I take overdub off, it erases every pass. Okay? So that's how overdub works. Uh, we have our metronome here, which we can have on all the time. There's also a, a volume control there and the play ticks. Now play ticks will play the little tiny beats in between each main beat. I'm going to listen here. Okay, so that's the play ticks. Next we have the groove, and this will open up the shuffle and accent dialog area. And in there, you can set the amount of shuffle that you want your track to have. Now this is global shuffle, so this will affect everything that you've set up to, uh, to use the global shuffle, and we'll get into that later. Same with the accent again, this is global as well, and we will cover all of that in detail a little bit later. Onward now to the display readout here. We have a DSP meter, which shows you how much of your CPU is being used. We got the IO meter, which is uh, disk-based activity. We have our BPM, we have our time signature, uh, we've also got track location indicators here telling you where we are. And we have some uh, automation buttons, which we'll look into later when we cover automation. This will restore automation control. This is if you've automated something and then you uh, change it manually. This will, uh, this will light up. And uh, then we have this, which is quite a handy one where if you've written a bunch of automation already and you move a clip, the automation will either follow it or not, depending on the setting of this. Now to the tools. The tools are your typical uh, selection. Then we have the time selection, the pen, we have an eraser, and we also have a knife tool here. And these can be easily accessed using the numbers. Uh, so this is one, two, three, four, and five on your keyboard. So very handy to do. There's also a neat little feature where if you don't permanently want to select 
this uh, this icon here. Say you've got the selection tool because you like moving things around and you quickly want to draw something in, you just hold down three, do your drawing, then let go, and it's now switched back to your original tool that you were on. So there's a, uh, there's a short and a long hold for each of these, which is very, very handy. The object selection tool is basically what you'd think it is. It allows you to grab things, move them around. It also allows you to uh, shorten things, lengthen things, and also allows you to double click and create things like I've just done there. We have the time selection tool, which lets you grab sections to apply actions to. So you could go in here and you could split it, for example, or you could bounce it in place if you uh, so wanted to. There's various different things, but this lets you select portions of clips without having to select the entire clip like you do when you're using the object selection tool. Next is the pen tool. And I'm just going to switch back to object selection here and I'm going to select some of these and press delete. And then I'm going to switch back to the pen tool. The pen tool lets you just draw in clips. Okay, now I can draw over top of clips as well, over top of existing ones, and it will create new regions for me. And as you would guess, the eraser does just that. You can either single click to cut little regions and click and drag, and it will highlight and uh, delete the region that you've dragged over. And then the knife tool is just for splitting clips up like so. We have this button here, which is the follow playback. And this is if you want to follow your cursor. Hold on, let me unloop this. This will scroll the view to follow your playhead. I'll leave that off for now. We'll switch back to here. And finally, on the very right here, we have this tab. Now, Bitwig Studio lets you have multiple projects open, and it's in a tabbed interface. So we only have our one project open here called header interface, and so it's the only tab. If I had multiple projects open, which we will later, you will see that this now comprises of multiple tabs and you can flick through them like any fancy web browser. So that's it for the header area, and I will see you in the next video.